Joining us, I always say we 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 ran out of time. Today we did not. We absolutely have time for Dennis time. Pitta, and there is good reason for this. Dennis is part of a very prestigious 2022 BYU Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony tonight. Dennis, congratulations! Congratulations, dude! Thank One you. on graduating, so that you could uh, you know make yourself eligible for this, and then being inducted. <laughs> And that's a big part of it. People don't realize you have to be graduated. You have to actually be a legitimate alumni to get this Hall of Fame nod. So had to take care of that first, and fortunately I was able to do that. that As we sadly chronicled recently, but Jim McMahon took yeah, a yes. long time to get this. Yeah, how, I mean, well. how long ago did Jim get in? 2014. Just, yeah, not that long ago. Yes, and unfortunately Jim's, uh, you know, th that ceremony was during the Utah State game moments after Taysom Hill breaks his leg. And it's like Jeez. the worst possible situation, <laughs> which just stunk for Jim. But what does this mean to you? Because obviously uh, your career at BYU, it's been a sec. But, like, there's a 10-year minimum, I think. Like, we could have done this had you graduated in 2019 maybe. Yeah, I don't know. 2020, don't know there's no list. fans. Dennis, blame it on COVID, 2020. So, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, what, what's it. your problem? I was going to get it in 2020. There was a pandemic, apparently. <laughs> um, no, I don't know all the criteria that goes into it. Um, I, I know that... I came to Austin Collies, I think it was two years ago, right, during the yeah. pandemic. So that doesn't hold water anymore, that excuse. Oh, but yeah, okay. So um, <laughs> I, I introduced Austin at his banquet thing and all that, and so I got to kind of see it firsthand. And I remember just talking to, I think it was Duff Tittle. He's like, hey, just so you know, you got to graduate, dude. And, like, at that moment I was like. You realized you know, at that moment you weren't graduated? Yeah, at that moment I realized I'm not graduated. <laughs> That's funny. No, um, Jayton, just let me finish, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't interrupt me while I'm telling a story. Thank you, Dustin. Um, thank you. So, did they really call you Jayton, by the way? Yeah, some That's guy called me Jayton. Jerome's way better. I know. I'm not even sure what your real name is, to be honest. I don't know either. I haven't seen the birth certificate. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't even remember what story I was telling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Austin. Oh, yeah. Duff's talking to you. Yeah, so Duff was yeah. talking to me. And, and so that, in that moment, I realized, you know what? And, and seeing Austin be able to go through all that, it was really cool. And, and not that I expected to be in the BYU Hall of Fame or anything like that. But Wait, what I do thought, you mean? I, I just thought, listen, if, if, if this is potential for me and, and, you know, someone like Duff was kind of hitting it, like, listen, you got to finish. So <laughs> I, 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 that motivated me enough to go back to school and, and, and get it done. Because when you're 10, 15 years removed from school, reapplying and doing not reapplying but getting back into it and, and getting back taking tests and all that it's that's tough sledding right there so good to was... know you're not self-motivated but uh <laughs> shout out to duff for reminding you and of course you were going to be in the hall of fame you were unbelievable here man i mean listen i know you're being humble but like seriously you were a hall of famer like well, the, i appreciate that after your junior year probably that's you know maybe I mean? the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> absolutely I, I do appreciate that and Listen, I, I, I look back on my BYU career, and I'm incredibly grateful for all that I was able to accomplish because my BYU career, as you guys know, did not start, you know, very high profile. It was of humble beginnings, and I came to BYU, and I was Dustin. You were du you yes. Know, you were literally I, I Dustin from Gary I changed my name Gary to Gary Dustin Croton. just so Gary Croton knew who I was. Dusty Buns from Stranger <laughs> Things. That's right. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, to be in this position now and to be able to look back and, and see all that I've accomplished at BYU is, is pretty remarkable. And, and pretty humbling for me, um, considering everything that I went through. With the helmet flying off so often, did you ever think you'd be a Hall of Famer after that? It's like, can I even keep my helmet on? I know. I can't alone? even properly strap my helmet on. How are they going to put me <laughs> in I'm any gonna get the Hall ball. of Fame? Yeah, that was always a challenge at BYU. It was never a challenge in the NFL. I don't know why. With your helmet? Yeah, my helmet. My, I, I can't remember a single time in the NFL where my helmet came off. Maybe, you know, college, they just hit harder. <laughs> okay, okay. But... It was never an issue. I, I don't know. I, I can't really explain it. In but spite of that. Yeah. Came My home. BYU helmet just didn't fit right. Yeah. Yes. Dennis Pitta, not Dustin. Dennis Pitta, BYU Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I interviewed Austin Colley, uh, who is going to do like a little video interview about you. And Spoiler alert. I, mean, he, he <laughs> I knew that, actually. Yeah. He said some incredibly <laughs> kind things about you. But one of the things I liked the most that he said about you was, and he, and he pointed to he, like himself and Max the first, and he's like, look, Max and I were very intense. Like, we wanted to, like, all football all the time. And yeah. sometimes that kind of, like, it kind of pushed guys away from us. Like, you're, you're too much for me. <laughs> and he said, Dennis had this incredible ability to be, like, zoned in and locked in, like, focused at all the right moments, but still be incredibly likable. So everybody loved Dennis regardless. Like, all 130 players on the roster loved Dennis. And Max and I... Pretty much nobody liked us. <laughs> <laughs> Too intense. I mean, there's some truth to that. You know, like, 
I, listen, I, I was fortunate enough to play with Max and Austin because they taught me a lot about competitiveness, about work ethic, all those kind of things that really served me well from my BYU career on. And uh, I, I owe those guys a ton because I, I kind of followed a lot of their example and stuff like that. But, but I'm very different personality-wise than Max and Austin in, in football. And, and that's completely true. And Max says that a lot, too. You know, we, we were coaching together out in Arizona for a long time. And uh, Max would always say, listen, I always want Dennis around because he can kind of calm me down. And, and, and you know, I, I just feel like I, I am the personality that never takes anything too seriously. And I know I'm always pretty serious with you guys, so you haven't seen that side of me. But um, <laughs> Second best number 32 I just, I, in BYU. If, if I can't so. enjoy doing something and I can't, like, be myself and have fun doing it, then, then I struggle to be any good at it. And so football for me, I, I wanted to be really good, and I worked hard, and I did all those things. But, like, if I couldn't enjoy myself and I couldn't have fun in the process, then, you know, it, it wasn't for me. So that was always a, something I tried to interject in, in everything. And, um you know, Max and Austin, I, I, I always tried to bring levity to the situation when they were a little bit jacked up and, and intense. But um, I think it worked for us. It was kind of a balance between, you know, their personalities and mine. Did a story, is there a story there in game where you ever did something or said something that loosened the mood when it was tense or anything come to mind? There? I don't know. I, I, I'm always the one, like, for example, with, with Max and I in coaching, you know, Max is... He'll turn around and he'll he'll hear guys like kind of not paying attention talking, and I'll be in the middle of that circle. In the back and he'll <laughs> You're the yell, one distracting. He'll yell back at the players, kind of indirectly at me, and guys, you know, he's yelling, "I'm guys, pay attention, focus," and I'm always the one kind of distracting everybody. So, <laughs> as I, special teams coordinator, as a, as a special teams coordinator and uh, wide receivers coach, yes. But, um, you know, I, I just, I, I think you got to have fun in, in anything you're doing. And, uh, you know, that might be distracting at times, <laughs> I'm sure. And Max might get frustrated with that and, and all that. But um, I think it works. You, you have to have different types of personalities on a team. If everybody was too intense, you know, everybody would kind of be, be too on edge. Yes. I think you have to have that kind of quiet um, confidence and relaxation within kind of that intensity that uh, has to be there as well. Plus, Robert and I is just screaming Ro at you. Robert and you I, got... you know, he was such a laid-back, cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Crushing and I was as intense as the they come, yeah. to be completely honest. Yeah. And uh, so if, <laughs> if I didn't bring levity to our tight end room, because he was our tight end coach. Oh, boy. It would have been it would have been difficult so uh, he's crushing at Syracuse right yes, now. yeah they're doing he, he really Jason well Jason Beck 3-0 you know, are they I haven't right I haven't been following Syracuse football yeah. Yeah. no one different. really does since Donovan yeah. McNabb but you know. so yeah, Micah Simon also involved as an offensive analyst that's right. on that squad. is he that's awesome yeah. and Quinn Edward Jr they brought all the homies coach and I has had success pretty much everywhere as an offensive court I mean yep. they, they did great things at Virginia with Bronco there and so yep. um his methods work you know but his method is not my method you know and and <laughs> we have different approaches personality wise to the game um, but that, but I think that's why on those teams in particular it worked a lot because we had a bunch of different personalities and guys that approached it different ways and um, yeah I think I, I think you have to have that. That's what BYU needed at the time. Like BYU For needed sure. Bronco to sort of stabilize the discipline and yes. be this sort of military uh, type sense uh, thing there. Which by the way, do you want him to jump back in college football? Oh, I would love it. I I look back at my time with Bronco and and. I'm incredibly grateful that Bronco was our coach because, like you said, I, I came from Gary Croton. I left on my mission, and, and you know, nothing against Gary Croton, but there was there was not enough discipline within the program. I mean, guys were getting in trouble. There was just it was just too relaxed of kind of a vibe there, and, and guys were getting away with too much. So Bronco came in; it was complete polar opposite, and he really dialed things in and, and brought that discipline and that work ethic and mm. and everything that BYU needed at that time to establish a foundation to build from. And, uh, and so he was the perfect guy for that situation. And he was a perfect coach for me, in my opinion. And uh, because I, I needed that structure. I needed that same kind of foundation because I can take things a little too uh, lightly at times, you know. And, 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 and uh, so that kind of work ethic and everything that he instilled in me as a, as a young player, um, I, I think was huge for my career as well. So speaking of the tight end room currently, uh, a yeah, shake it's a little up, different now, major right? shake up this yeah. week, obviously with yeah. Dallin Holker announcing that he's entering the transfer portal and he wants to you probably utilize his redshirt year. That's why he's doing it now, so he can have two years wherever he goes. But that's a that's a shock to the system, right? Because sure. BYU and Kalani are so big on culture, um, and so this comes as kind of a like a, a major surprise. 
how do you expect the transfer of Dallin Holker to impact the BYU tight ends room right now? Well, it's a big loss. It, it really is. I, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I, I, I got to know Dallin a little bit just leading up to this season. I, I met him in the offseason, and, and I've talked to him on the phone a couple different times. And um, He's a great kid, number one. And he's a hard worker. I mean, the first time I met him, he had his wife shooting jug machine balls at him. <laughs> and, you know, they had, like, newly married. They might have even been engaged. And she's an athlete. She know, she's, I, what is she, track, I think? She's a track she, athlete. Track athlete, yeah. Yeah, so, like, knows what it takes. the dude's pulling his wife over just in off time in the offseason and, and catching more balls. Like, he, he has a work ethic, and he wants to be a great player. And I think... I think BYU messed up a little bit in not utilizing him more. And I, I've been saying this from the beginning. Like, they have to find a way. When you have two talented tight ends, like you do in Isaac Rex and you had in Dallin Holker. You dealt with this. Yeah. I mean, you and Andrew, Andrew George. George. And I. I mean, it, and it is such a weapon to have two guys who can block. Now, I couldn't block, but, but they can, right? Finally, you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always admit that. <laughs> All right. Andrew could block. I couldn't block. Good blocker. Yeah. But to have two guys who can block at the line of scrimmage, but also be able to split out and run routes and, and be just total mismatches in, in the back end. I mean, it's such an advantage. And I, and I really do feel like BYU is underutilizing those matchups, especially early in the season when you don't have your top two wide receivers in Gunner and Puka out on the field. Like, we should have seen Dallin Holker get a lot more balls. And I think that's played into his frustration early in the season. He, because going in the season, you talk to Dallin, um, you talk to Roderick, you talk to those guys like, he was going to be a big part of things, and you just didn't see it through the first few games for whatever reason. And, and you just didn't see him in position a lot. And I'm not putting this on Jaron Hall because I, I didn't see him in position a lot to where he was the number one guy in a progression or, or kind of the number one receiver in, in a route. Should Isaac Rex be the number one, though, given what Isaac's done the last couple years? The number one tight end? Yes. For sure. Uh, are you talking about with Dallin? Yeah, when you say Dallin should be the number one or whatever, it's like, well, BYU has a lot of options at receiver, at uh, – it, it's a crowded room. I think that's where the problem is, Dennis. There's a lot of talented guys there. Right, but, but Isaac wasn't in those positions either, is my point, mm. right? And, and I think uh, even Isaac would admit that Dallin's more of a receiver than he is. I think I look at Isaac as more of a complete tight end. He's more physical at the line of scrimmage. He's a better blocker um, and, and also incredibly capable and has great hands and, and catch radius and all that as a receiver. But Dallin's more the receiving tight end. Yeah, like Every you and Johnny types? Me and Johnny? No, Dal and Dallin is more Dallin. comparable to you and oh, Johnny Harleen. Is that I was like, I didn't necessarily play with Johnny. I did play with Johnny, actually. Well, I mean, Johnny Harleen and you, more of the receiver tight end. For sure. Gotcha. Uh, that's how I view Dallin more so in that mold. Gotcha. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying Isaac is just a blocking tight end because he's incredibly capable. The dude scored 12 touchdowns his freshman year. And so, uh, but, but, but Dallin needs to be in those positions where he can be the number one guy in a progression for a quarterback. And I didn't see that. I mean, really, you saw his ability in, in garbage time in that Oregon game. He had, like, three or four catches in a row at the end of that game. And you're sitting there realizing, like, why wasn't this guy more involved early on? And I just felt like he should have been. And I felt like it should have been from the, from the start of this season. Because when you have weapons like that on the inside, you can just, you can just really hurt defenses and, and create such incredible mismatches. NFL offenses all understand this. You know, if they have two good tight ends, guess what? Both those guys are going to be on routes constantly. You know, and if you have one good tight end, that guy's most likely your, your highest targeted guy in a lot of cases. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, a Darren Waller, those kind of guys. Mark Andrews for the Ravens right now. I mean, he's getting more targets than, than all their receivers combined right now because he's a great tight end. And so I just think BYU missed the mark a little bit in utilizing those guys, and that's a big reason why Dallin transferred. I think he was frustrated with his role. He thought it would be a bigger year for him this year, and it just wasn't. So he wants to go to a spot where he can really prove himself because I believe he's an NFL guy. Mm. I really do. And I think Isaacs is an NFL guy. And I think those guys need more opportunities. Dennis Pitt is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We need to ask you about Wyoming because you know what it's like to play against Wyoming. And we yeah. think this might be the last game that BYU has against Wyoming for quite a while. It's a shame it's not in Laramie. <laughs> Such a beautiful <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah. What advice do you have for this year's BYU football team about playing – against and preparing for the quote-unquote typical Wyoming team? Yeah, Wyoming's always tough. You know, they, they just have, you know, tough cowboys or whatever you want to call them, right? And uh, they're going to be physical. They're going to want to, you know, rough you up and, and all that. It's not going to be a finesse game. And so BYU, um, you know, and I think you going back to that Oregon game, as a fan, you're, you were a little bit disappointed in the physicality they brought to that game. I mean, Oregon just kind of beat them in the trenches up and down the field. 
And so you have to come in with a completely different mindset in this game against Wyoming because Wyoming's going to want to do the same thing. They're going to want to beat you up in the trenches, and they're going to want to be tough, and they're going to hit you late, and they're going to do all those different things to try and get in your head and, and, and do that and be physical because they think, you know, there's, there's you know, a blueprint now to how to BYU, just out physical them at the line of scrimmage. And so BYU's got to really establish that early. And I think if they do, you know, this, this can be a runaway because Wyoming's not as talented as BYU. We know that. You know, they don't have the skill position players like they do. They don't have a Jaron Hall on the other side. But, but they're going to be physical. They're going to be, you know, nasty and a little bit dirty. And, and BYU's got to manage themselves and, and kind of control their emotions and just play physical, tough, you know, high execution football. And, and it should be a good day. Now, I, I hope that, you know, for my sake, that this is a good game, but that we win because, you know, I'm going to be honored at halftime. <laughs> well, if they screw this up for me, you know, I'm going to be upset. I don't know. Don't interrupt me, Jayden. <laughs> okay? It's Jayton. Jayton. <laughs> Sorry. Jerome, go ahead. No, I'm waiting for you to finish. No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> now you're done? Yeah, I'm done. You don't uh, care about a sec the second half. You only care about the first half. Because <laughs> you're on it at halftime. That's true. I'm out of halftime. <laughs> yeah. I got young kids. I may not even stick around for the second half. I will, actually. <laughs> I, I like BYU football. That was a joke. Yeah. Dennis, congratulations. Thank you, guys. In all sincerity on uh, being an inductee for the 2022 BYU Athletic Hall of Fame. That's, and that's tonight. Very for people cool. that know, if you didn't get the invite, don't <laughs> show up. Who's seeing tonight? Did they choose oh, They chose Spencer? Oh, okay. yeah. I wasn't I, sure. I'm not involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do they have like a Broadcasters Hall of Fame, like BYU Broadcasters Hall of Fame? <laughs> One day. We'll just create well, our own and throw ourselves Spencer's on track. Spencer, you're on track. <laughs> Jerome, it's not for everyone. It's, it's going to be, it's it's be Jay Monson. Paul James, <laughs> Greg Rubel, Spencer Kent Linton. Oh, my goodness. And Jayton Jordan. And Jayton Jordan. <laughs> Jayton. One day. That's great to hey, catch I like up that with name you. better than your real name. How dare you? It's, it's got a nice the, ring to it's it. It's in the Book of Mormon. How dare you?